Hello, I'm Kevin Field, and this is Radio Skills for Podcasters, Episode 3, Interview Skills. Learn the secrets of the radio industry. Create powerful podcasts. Powerful. Get. Keep. And grow your audience. And increase your profits. This is Radio. Radio Skills for Podcasters. Radio Skills for Podcasters. With Kevin Field. With Kevin Field. Enjoy the podcast. And welcome to Radio Skills for Podcasters. My name is Kevin Field. This podcast is always around 10 minutes. In each episode, I share with you the skills I've gained having worked in the radio industry for more than 20 years. I hope these skills will help you take your podcast to the next level. This is Radio Skills for Podcasters. In this episode, we'll be looking at interview skills, some do's and don'ts, some great tricks, advice and guidance on doing interviews. We have our top tips. This week, a special top tip to use in your interview sessions, which could change the answers you receive. Don't forget you can get in touch. Feedback is always welcome at radio underscore skills on Twitter. Uh, You can like our Facebook page by searching for Radio Skills for Podcasters on Facebook or visit the website radioskillsforpodcasters.com. You can read the blog notes and other blogs on the site. As the podcast goes along, we'll be adding lots more resources and information to help you out on the website. Now, in these first few podcasts, I'm just touching the surface. They're only 10 minutes long. So later on, I'll come back and visit each individual area and go into more detail. There is lots to talk about, especially around interviews. Several people have asked me about interview techniques and how we do it in the radio industry. And can I pass those skills on to you? So here goes. Radio skill. We'll be looking at the types of interviews and the usage, preparation and research, how sitting comfortably helps, conversation and completing the circle, thinking about your listener, background and ambient noise during the interview, what and where, why and how, the open questions, of course, listen and interview tricks, some secret sauce to share with you as we go along. So what are the type of interviews you can do? Well, down the line, this is the most popular technique uh, for the majority of podcasters, recorded most via Skype, mobile phone, or other technology where you're not sat face-to-face with the interviewee. One-to-one in the studio, recorded in a studio set up face-to-face with the interviewee. Often the best form of interview because you can interpret exactly what's happening from someone's reactions, their body language, and their breath pattern as you're interviewing them. The location interview, recorded on site or on location. These can be great to get atmosphere into an interview. Often in documentaries I make, I make sure I get a real depth of different types of interviews in there, just to give it a bit of flavour from the studio down the telephone line or or Skype, and then also a location interview. It's really nice to, to have. But the thing about location interviews is you need to be aware of the distractions that take you away from the heart of the interview subject matter. Then there's also the vox pop, meaning voice of the population. These are short snippet interviews. Perhaps you can't really call them that, but they're usually encouraging views on a particular subject matter. They're often recorded on location as well. There are standards that you should always aim for, for the best quality, right at source, right at the start. You need to set your microphone up, you need to set your record levels up, you need to make sure your your source audio is perfect every time. Try to peak at around minus 3 dB. This provides enough headroom to get the signal processing going right. If it's too low, then you'll get lots of shush when you try to make it louder. If it's too high, too loud, then the audio distorts because you're hitting that headroom that the waveform has. So try, try, minus 3 dB will probably help you out. Preparation and research. Questions up front. Should we do that? Some interviewees will ask you to provide questions up front. This is entirely up to you and dependent on your desired outcome. I often provide an outline of an intended interview, but I stop short of providing the full questions. I do explain to the interviewee why I do this. I want the questions to be spontaneous or the answers to the questions to be spontaneous and from the heart and not practiced and sounding false. It's a conversation in interview, so I want it to be a conversation between two people. You know, we complete the circle of that interview. You have to remember it's not just you and the interviewee, but you, the interviewee, 
and the listener. In radio, we call this the circle, the relationship between all three of you. Only in this case, the listener cannot interact. They can listen. The trick is to make them feel that they're a part of that interview. And the other thing is, remember in-jokes. They don't work. If you and the interviewee know each other really well and he starts slinging in some in-jokes or things only you two know about, the listener's going to feel left out if you just, they don't understand it. So don't do the in-joke side of thing. What questions do you ask? Well, you may have heard of the what, where, when, how and why. These are often the starters that people say to you to get in as an interview question because they're open-ended. So you always try to offer open-ended questions to the interviewee. A closed question allows the interviewee to simply say yes or no. So an example of a closed question, did you make this cake? Or an example of an open question, so you made this cake, where did you get the idea from? It's very simple, isn't it, really? There's a thing that people do, a tendency that some people have to do, is put the answers into the person's mouth when they're, when they're asking the question. And they're almost paraphrasing when they come back with almost a preferred answer. Try not to do that. You want it to be real. You want it to be from the person who you're interviewing. The other thing to say to you is listen. Listen to your guest. Listen to their answers. Other questions come from their responses. It's how it works. It's a conversation. But also the listener wants to listen to them, not to you. You ask your question, you shut up. You let the other person give you their answer. And then maybe something else comes from that in a conversational style. Always prep. Have in front of you a prep sheet for your interview. It's a living document. And I always keep it on file afterwards. I save it. I always keep notes throughout my interview. I add new questions in. I take things out because they may have answered it already. I always make little notes along the side as well, just to help me when I'm editing. Because the editing process, the workflow needs to be quick. The things to do during an interview, so you've done all your prep and research and you've got your notes in front of you, Uh, make sure you and your guests feel comfortable over the phone, Skype, uh, studio interviews, all of that lot. Just check if it's okay. Do they need a glass of water? Um, Are they happy? Uh, Is there anything happening in the background? Think about sound. Is there any noises that could interrupt your interview in the background? If there is, and they do, then make sure you re-ask the question if it's in the middle of the question or understand if you can edit it. There's a reason I say this. I was listening to a podcast recently and there was a dog started barking in the background and the presenter and the guest made a bit of a joke about it, but it just took me away completely from the subject matter and I really never got back into it. I was like, oh, no, I'm done with this and I'd switch it off. Never give your listener an excuse to switch off. So the background sounds, think about what they are, where they are. Whether you're doing a a Skype interview, whether you're doing it on location, think about the sounds around you. If you're doing a location interview, the idea of sitting comfortably is take the person away from the area that's got all the music in it because you have to pay copyright. Even if you have a little bit in the background, you'll have to pay the copyright on it. So just make sure, think about what's in the background wherever you're doing your interview. During your interview, Iterate. Think about this. If you didn't get the answer you want, then ask it again, but in a slightly different way. You might have to frame the question differently, perhaps not do it straight away. So the interviewee goes, well, I just answered that. He says, ask me again in a different way. Try and work it in throughout the interview, but it's a way of getting the answer you want because you don't always get the answer that you really desire, perhaps because the question wasn't quite right or you didn't frame it in the right way. Of course, I said earlier that your listener wants to hear your guest, but when it's appropriate, you know, get involved as well. There's got to be some of your podcast characteristics that you put in to the interview. Your above the line and below the line characteristics about you need to imprint on that interview as well. And remember to think about your listener all the way through this. What do they want to hear? What is their pain and how can your interview guest help them solve the pain? Your questions should provide answers that resonate with that listener. Learn the secrets of the radio industry. Radio skills for podcasters. 
There is so much to cover in interview skills and techniques, there really is. And we've only touched the surface. And of course, this podcast is uh, around 10 minutes each time. So I will go into more detail in the future about this. But And there's much more that we can talk about, including nodding instead of saying mm, ah, mm, nah, but we'll get into that in the future. We'll also talk about writing a cue, how to write a cue to introduce your interview guest. And we'll talk about the edit, how to edit up your interview, different techniques of doing it that can be really clever. But now it's this week's top tip. This is this Radio yes. Skills for Podcasters. Radio Skills for Podcasters. With Kevin Field. This week's top tip is derived from many years of doing interviews with people and also many years of training and working with others, producing others doing interviews. And it's a really good one. It's one that um, I think changed quite a few people's interview skills when I said, why don't you do this? It's a really simple thing, but try it. And they got some great results. And it's a really simple thing. During an interview, sometimes in the right interview, has to be the right interview, I think. Leave silence at the end of the interviewee's answer. Keep quiet. This single tip has given me and others some really great gold audio, some that became the highlight of an interview. You can get in touch with us here at Radio Skills for Podcasts. Feel free to get in touch. Provide feedback. It's welcome. Or ask me to look at a subject matter that links to your particular podcast pain. Is there something that's hurting you that you want to improve on and I can help? It's easy. Skills at RadioSkillsForPodcasters.com or follow us on Twitter at Radio underscore Skills. And you can find us on Facebook, Radio Skills for Podcasters. Next time. Next time with Radio Skills for Podcasters. Next time we look at show prep and research ahead of your podcast. Is there any point in show prep and using a show sheet? We'll find out. See you next time. Find us on Facebook. Google Plus. Radio Skills for Podcasters. At Radio underscore Skills on Twitter. Thanks for listening. www.radioskillsforpodcasters.com. Radio Skills for Podcasters.